It's a full-time job to stay up to date with the latest agronomic advice, especially for Ohio, where the challenges for crops are ever-changing. Syngenta recently brought together a number of retailers from around the state to their Grow More Experience site in the southwest corner of Union County. There they learned agronomic tips to better help Ohio's farmers. Now we did speak with several presenters of the day recapping their lessons, and we start off by hearing from Jenny Shaw on some challenges facing soybeans. So soybean cyst nematodes uh, tend to be a silent killer on our soybean fields. There's not a lot of visual symptomology that we tend to see from soybean cyst nematodes, but annually growers are losing about five or $1.5 billion per year um, from soybean cyst nematode infections. So we typically can actually see anywhere from 5% uh, to 40% yield reduction from soybean cyst nematodes. Um, additionally, they're really hard to eradicate, so you know every year that we go on treating them, the more the population builds up and continues to build throughout the year. Uh, they tend to lead to secondary pests as well, so you know sudden death syndrome has gotten a lot of attention in the last couple of years. Uh, we know that the root cause of sudden death syndrome a lot of times is soybean cyst nematode. Additionally, you know, we open the opportunity for other soybean pathogens to get into the soybean plants, you know, additional stress on the plant, and ultimately just reduced yields because of soybean cyst nematode pressure. So there's a lot of practices that we've been using in the past that have worked fairly well. Um, one thing is to rotate. So, you know, any time that we can rotate away from a soybean cyst nematode host, it uh, decreases the opportunity for the reproduction to happen year in and year out. You know, secondly, what we can do is um, we can have a really solid uh, weed program. So if you think about, you know, some of these winter annuals that we have, purple dead nettle, hembit, a lot of common ones we see, those actually act as um, common hosts that a soybean would act to, to actually help increase the populations of soybean cyst nematodes. Additionally, using things like uh, resistant varieties, so the PI-88788 trait has been a really useful tool in the past to kind of help uh, slow down that reproduction process. Um, and additionally, using, you know, solid seed care programs like Clariva Complete um, really helps kind of kill those soybean cyst nematodes and helps kind of slow down that process of invasion. Good afternoon, I'm Jason Clymer with Syngenta, and we're out here at our Grow More facility in uh, Marysville, Ohio. And, uh, you know, we, we had a group of uh, retailers out here today, and the message that we wanted to express to them is to utilize our site as we look at different agronomic practices and uh, looking at different products, um, not only our own but our competitors to develop our message and our take home for you know, how we can provide a better service and uh, a better mindset and information piece to our growers as we continue to face challenges every day um, with uh, development of crop and controlling of weeds. And, you know, some things that we're looking at here specifically in my segment today is uh, when we look at herbicide control and we look at weed control, um, you know, we've all been faced with some challenges, not only with uh, the weed species that we're fighting and maybe ineffectiveness of what we feel with herbicides, but just the timing itself. And, you know, what we're really seeing out here is a timely herbicide application and what it's significant is to weed control, but not only that, to crop development. And you know, if you could if you could see our message over here, you know, we've had some applications that were two to three weeks delayed from what we normally want to apply, and there's a significant crop um, detriment to that. I mean, in a lot of instances, we're two to three growth stages behind where a normal application would be, and you know, not only is that given a uh, issue for crop development, but what's that meaning down the road? I mean, it's definitely going to be some yield loss and could have some more harvest issues and other factors that come into play in the season later on. My name is Amanda Conan. I'm a sales rep in West Central Ohio. And uh, at my stop today, we talked about uh, disease management in soybeans as well as uh, weed management in soybeans, which has become more of an issue in recent years. Uh, in my territory, in Western Ohio, we're facing more water hemp. So staying ahead of that water hemp is going to become really important. Uh, not only running multiple modes of action in our pre-herbicides, as well as tillage management with weed control, but also a second mode of action in crop in addition to glyphosate alone. We're seeing more and more weeds. Additionally, uh, we talked about disease control. So septoria brown spot and frog eye and soybeans and keeping those diseases out to allow the plant to maximize on the growing season. Mm -hmm. So to have a longer, um, lasting uh, ability to do photosynthesis and fill out the pods that are there and uh, have a good quality seed. Uh, what we're looking for in the plant is disease lesions. So um, we're starting to see them already. So uh, small freckle-like lesions that will show um, disease setting in. And if you don't see the freckles yet, you may be able to see them by pulling the leaf and uh, 
showing it up to the sunlight and there's already starting to be translucent circles on the plant which um, is a indicative of disease that's yet to set in. Here at the Growmore site in Marysville uh, at the early season diagnostic portion of the Growmore site here uh, with the corn block uh, what we try to communicate with growers here is the importance of uniform planting depth, um, not having the corn planted too shallow uh, to make sure we have uniform moisture and uniform temperature to make sure all our corn is coming up together. Uh, we try to uh, show uh, things that can go wrong even when you do the proper planting depth. Uh, here you see some what I'd call tomahawk roots with some sidewall compaction. Uh, you see there was a lateral zone with some pancake roots and this was planted two and a half inches deep so we did get a good root system below um, but you can see there where it, it, it met the sidewall compaction and it was able to travel down uh, but wasn't able to travel out. So things like tillage, um, uh, early season tillage with uh, vertical tillage sometimes done too wet can cause that lateral uh, that lateral layer uh, inch and a half two inches deep where they work it making sure that we get it below that compaction zone um, other things like residue this is corn on corn and you can see the residue this was only planted an inch uh, excuse me a half an inch deep uh, so you see much smaller root system the nodal roots are almost on the ground the crown and, and, and the, the brace roots you we see we have um, we have a bunch of uh, fodder from last year in, in the root ball in inhibiting growth but also showing that, um, that it was planted too shallow um, uh, this, this spring. Uh, the last thing we always try to show is uh, staging corn, how important it is to stage corn properly both early for herbicide and fungicide applications um, and then but also later on uh, when we start doing tassel applications and how to diagnose and make recommendations there on proper timing.